Hey, welcome back students. In this video, I want to go ahead and talk to you a little bit about the net ionic equations and actually show you an example of how this actually gets done. And so I want to go ahead and bring up the little process that we had before. Here's what it is. Notice from before, in order for us to go through this net ionic equation part, we first have to go through a balanced reaction, establish that, and then once we get that, then we can convert all of the aqueous compounds into ions in the ionic equation. And then identify the spectator ions in the net I the ionic equation so that we can then eliminate them so that we can write the net ionic equation. And so these are the steps that we're going to use. I'm just going to put these over here on the right so that we can actually refer to them as we go through. And let's go ahead and give us an example here so that we can actually start solving some of these problems. And so I'll just go ahead and begin with something that's pretty easy that was identified in our homework. And so let's go ahead and do that. You might have remembered this one here. So let me write it down for us here and then I'll, I'll go ahead and bring you back. Okay, so here is the reaction and we're taking lithium hydroxide and notice it's in the aqueous. And so take a look right here. It's aqueous and it's going to be combined or added to iron nitrate. And so nitrate NO3 here. I probably should identify this here. Let me go ahead and fix the O. There we go, we just fixed it. So go ahead and take a look at the nitrate here. Notice here, we've got some information. So we, what we need to determine here is we gotta go ahead and figure out what are we gonna get on the other side, okay? So the easiest way that I've shown you how to do this in the past is to go ahead and identify the cation versus the anion. So we're gonna go ahead and divide it right here. And we're gonna go ahead and divide it right here. This is gonna be the positive side, this is the negative for the lithium and hydroxide and over here positive and negative. The other thing is we also need to identify the charges. And so if you look on your periodic table of ions, you'll notice that lithium, because it's in group one, is going to have a plus one charge and hydroxide is a minus one charge as well for the whole thing. Go on to the next compound. Now, we, we if we don't know what the charge of iron is here, we can look at one area. We can look over here. Notice there's three copies of the nitrate. We already know that nitrate has a minus one charge. And we've got three of them. So that means that the total charge for the nitrate is a minus three on the right side. So we need to have a positive three for the iron. And so that's how we're gonna determine that to be a plus three. Now, this is the first step that you need. We now need to figure out, okay, what do we get on the other side? So what we need to go ahead and do is go ahead and make the prediction. Since we've already got the positive and negative identified down below, we now need to ask ourselves, okay, between the two cations, and there's two cations here, where there's a lithium and there's an iron, we need to figure out, is lithium higher in, act, in the activity series than iron? So if you've got your little activity series chart that I've shared with you, look at it, and you will find that in this particular case, lithium is actually greater in activity series than iron. So the reaction will proceed from the lithium reacting with displacing the iron and then combining with the nitrate. And so that's what's going to happen here in this particular uh, section. So let's go ahead and make that addition now on the other side. And so what we'll do here is we'll say that it's going to be lithium combining with nitrate here. I'm not going to transfer any subscripts at this point. I'm just going to transfer it over. And then the other product is going to be the uh, iron here combining with the hydroxide that's been left over. And so let's go ahead and do that. Oops. Let's go ahead and do that and get rid of it here. And so let me back up a bit here. Oop. Let us go ahead and do that. And then over here on the other side, we're going to have iron and then hydroxide. Now, the one thing that you will notice is that we don't have any charges on the right side, so you need to go ahead and do that now. Transfer all the charges that we wrote over here. In this case, I wrote them in red or pink, depending on your screen. Um, you want to go ahead and transfer them over, so we'll have a plus one for the lithium. Nitrate in its entirety is going to be a minus one. Iron winds up being a plus three, because that's what it was on the left-hand side. And then the hydroxide here is a minus one. Now, right off the bat, you're going to notice if I take the charges now on the right side, the plus one, when I add it to a minus one, that will give me a zero charge for the lithium nitrate. So that is actually neutral. and We don't want to mess with that anymore. And so we'll go ahead and leave that alone. And then what we'll do now is focus on the iron and the hydroxide. Notice the charge of iron is three, but the hydroxide has a charge of minus one. Here's where you're going to have to do some crisscrossing. 
And so because of the three, we'll bring the three down here and we'll write a three there and then bring this one and bring it down. And so that's generally what we'll do. And so let's go ahead and write that down. And notice here, I'm gonna to have to put a parenthesis around the OH and bring that three. Now I've got three copies of the hydroxide for a total charge of minus three. And that cancels out with the positive three charge of the iron, giving me a neutral compound. So this here is the overall reaction, or at least we're almost there. What we still need to do is we still need to balance it. And then we also need to identify whether we have aqueous or not. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Let's identify aqueous or not. So when we look at um, the lithium nitrate, we'll see that lithium nitrate is going to be aqueous here, AQ. And then we'll look for the iron hydroxide. Iron hydroxide is going to wind up being, for us, a insoluble. So this is going to wind up producing a precipitate for us. So we'll label it as S. The iron nitrate over here is an actually an AQ. And the lithium hydroxide actually winds up being a aqueous as well. It's soluble, so that'll be AQ. All that's left to do now is to balance, and let's go ahead and balance that out. And we're going to use the color here for this one. We're going to use, uh, let's see here, a bright orange to uh, balance it out. We'll start off with the lithium. Notice there's one copy on the left, one copy on the right. Move on to the next item, and here it's the hydroxide. We've got one copy on the left, but on the right side, notice we've got three. So we're going to have to remedy that right now. So we're going to add three copies of the lithium hydroxide. I'm just going to write the, the uh, coefficient in orange just above the um, compound here because I'm running out of space. And it'll be easier for us to see. The next thing that we got to do is move on to the next compound. Notice we've got one copy of iron. And on the right side, we've got one copy of iron. So that's okay there. But what we do here is we got to go look at the nitrates. But notice the nitrates here, we've got three copies. Now, when we added the three for the lithium hydroxide, notice what we did to the lithiums. We made three lithiums on this side. That still has not been resolved on the right. So that's something we got to remedy right now. And so that means that we're going to have to come in here and put a three in the front for the coefficient for lithium nitrate on the right side. That'll give us three copies of lithium nitrate. And that does remedy the three for the lithium nitrate on the left, or excuse me, the iron nitrate on the left because now we have three copies of nitrate on the right. So if you look at this here, everything is now balanced. So the only thing left to do is to put the one in front of the iron nitrate and the one of the, in front of the iron hydroxide. So this here is what we call the overall balanced reaction. So let's go ahead and label that right here. This is the overall balanced reaction. And so this here actually is going to be the first step. We've just accomplished it. And now we need to take this and move it over and try to get it into the ionic equation. And so that's what we're going to try to do now uh, from this one here. Okay. And so let's continue on. I'm going to go ahead and extend this video on. I'm not, I'm not going to cut it off at eight minutes. Just please keep watching. If it's too long, go ahead and pause it and then continue on. Okay. But that was step one. Now we got to take this equation that we just wrote. And we're going to have to convert this into the ionic equation. So let me go ahead and separate this out. Let me put a line here and we'll write the ionic equation down below. So all that we need to do at this point is we need to go in here and focus on the compounds that have aqueous. Notice here lithium hydroxide, iron nitrate, and lithium nitrate. The iron hydroxide over here in the product is a solid. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave that alone. We're not going to touch that at all. So all we're going to have to do here is just bring it down. But since I'm going to go ahead and write this all the way out from the very beginning, let's go ahead and do this out here after uh, we've uh, changed everything into ion forms. So for every compound that is an aqueous, what we're going to do is we're going to write it into ion form. We've conveniently already uh, broken the compound out. Notice the, the little line that I wrote in green here. I've wrote it for the second compound, but I have not written it for the aqueous product. And so I'll cut it there. The line here essentially is going to be where we're going to separate it out into the various ions. So here, what we've got is we've got three copies of lithium hydroxide. In actuality, what that means is that you've got lithium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, and lithium hydroxide. Okay. And this is also going to be, we also have one copy of iron nitrate. 
Okay. Now we could write it like this, but what we need to do is we actually need to break these up into the various parts and separate them out. And so what we're going to do now is actually do that. So let me back up here and erase everything and we'll come back up to the very beginning and actually write it the way we should in ion form. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to have three copies here of lithium. Make sure you write the charge plus we're also going to have three copies of hydroxide. Okay, that's the first compound. The second compound is going to be plus one copy of iron three plus, and we're also going to have one copy. Excuse me, three copies because of the item right here. Notice the little uh, three here. So we're going to have three copies. Whoop. And so let me just edit that right away. Here's a three copies of NO three minus, and that'll take us all the way through the first half or the reactant part of the compound. Now we got to make our way over to the products. Notice over here on the products we've got three copies of lithium nitrate. And what that really means here is we've got three copies of lithium ion plus three copies of nitrate with the minus one charge. And then here's where we're going to bring down that solid. Just write it all the way down. Iron hydroxide three. And for lack of space I'm just going to label it right here as solid. So this here is the ionic equation. So let's go ahead and write that down here. This is going to be the overall ionic equation. Now inside the ionic equation, what you're going to have is you are going to have a copy. Uh, you will have spectator ions. So let's go ahead and identify those. I'll just go ahead and circle them. Now the spectator ions are not involved in the overall reaction, but they are present. I, uh, they're present both in the reactant side of the reaction and they're also present on the product side. And so whenever you see an ion on both sides, that's your spectator ion. So let's begin with the very first one here. We've got lithium. Three copies of lithium. Notice it's on the left side and it's also over here on the right. This here, because it exists on both sides, on the left and the right, this is a spectator ion. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to go ahead and circle it on both sides. And we do this so that we can identify it very easily. Go ahead and look at the next one here. Hydroxide, we've got three copies of hydroxide. But hydroxide exists on the product side, but notice over here it's part of the compound that's already a solid, so we don't want to mess with that one. We're going to skip it for now. We'll go ahead and go to the next uh, ion here, and this one here is going to be the iron. And the iron is also found on the product side, but it's also in the solid, so we're not going to mess with that. And so we now move on to the nitrate. Notice we've got three nitrates on the reactant side and we've got three nitrates on the product side. This one is a spectator ion. So we'll circle that and we'll circle that. These spectator ions here, so let me just identify them like this. Spectator ions and those ions include that one, that one, that one, and that one. These ions are not things that we want in the overall net ionic equation. So what we're going to do at this point is we're going to go ahead and X them out. They're going to be canceled. We're not going to include them. And so in the next step, which I'll write down here at the very bottom, this is going to be our net ionic equation. And the net ionic equation does not include any spectator ions. And so what we'll do here is we're going to rewrite everything that's left that has not been scratched out. And so in this case, what we wind up getting here is going to be 3OH minus plus 1FE3 plus. And this is going to produce 1FEOH3. And then again, here the designation of solid. This is the overall step. And that actually completes the third step for us. And what you notice here in the net ionic equation is that this net ionic equation is only going to reflect the ions that are involved in the reaction to produce the solid, either on the right side, which is the case here, or on the left. So you'll see ions on the, on the right that are going to be leading or that came from the solid on the left. So this here is the final net ionic equation. And this is the way you actually solve it, folks. I know it's pretty lengthy. It takes about 15 minutes with me explaining. It shouldn't take you that long, though, overall. But do make sure you go back and you watch this video again if you need some additional instruction or come and see me. But overall, 
net ionic equations, you do have to begin with a balanced reaction. Make sure that you have the coefficients identified and the solubilities for each, either aqueous, solid, or liquid. And then from there, convert everything to ions so that you can get the overall ionic equation. Identify the spectator ions, cancel them, and then in the net ionic equation, write the remaining parts of the reaction that are not spectator ions. And those spectator ions, you leave them out of the final equation, and that will be your net ionic equation. So I do want to go ahead and take uh, time to actually do a shout out. I want to go ahead and uh, do a shout out to uh, Steph Dizzle. If you're out there, thanks for uh, letting me know that you want me to do a shout out. I'm actually happy and glad to do it. So this shout out goes out to Steph Dizzle. Keep learning, Steph. I know you're going to do great on this. But everyone else, including Steph, keep watching, keep learning, and we will see you definitely in the next video.